Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss what to pack on a short business trip. For a short business trip, the small carry-on is ideal. The big spinner suitcase has to be checked. It takes longer. And if you want to learn how to pack the large spinner suitcase as well as the small carry-on suitcase, please check out the respective videos here. So what is this video about? We talk about what items you should bring so you have a very versatile, flexible, and appropriate business wardrobe. First of all, it starts with a choice of the right suitcase or carry-on. Personally, I'm a big fan of wheels, especially four wheels, not the two wheels, because you can easily maneuver them with one hand. Also, I prefer stiffer suitcases so I can put a bag on top of it without it collapsing on me. So when you start packing, I suggest to first lay everything out on your bed or maybe on a carpet or in a clean space where you have a good overview. Depending on the length of your business trip, you may just need one pair or sometimes two pairs of shoes. I suggest you wear a pair when you travel and keep another one in your suitcase because shoes last you a lot longer if you don't wear them consecutively day after day. To save on space, you can put your underwear as well as your socks rolled up and stuff them in your shoes. That works like a substitute shoe tree without having the extra weight. Because shoes are dirty and everything is close together, I suggest you put your shoes in shoe bags. So what shoes to bring for a business trip, black is the ultimate color. I suggest you go with a black cap to Oxford. Alternatively, you can also go with a black Oxford half brook or black Oxford quarter brook. That little bit of brooking makes it a little less formal. At the same time, it's perfectly appropriate for everything from boardroom meetings to general office meetings. If you have a big foot and you have issues with the closed lacing system of an Oxford, a derby shoe is acceptable as well. Now, the second pair of ring is a dark red or oxblood burgundy colored dress shoe. Could either be a tassel loafer and you could travel with that because it's easy to take on and off when you're through security, or you could go with a derby shoe or maybe even an Oxford. I like the color burgundy because it's dark enough to be appropriate for most office and business environments, yet at the same time, you can wear it interchangeably with any kind of brown tone if you go to a more casual outing afterwards or during the business trip. So if I had to bring just one pair of shoes on my trip and I knew there were events with different degrees of formality, I would opt for an oxblood or dark red shoe. Maybe during the winter, you can get away with a pair of boots. That being said, I think the regular men's dress shoe Oxford is the best business shoe out there. If you have space constraints in your carry-on, I suggest to put one shoe on one side and one on the other, ideally by the wheels. That way, the weight of the shoe won't squish your suits or your shirts or any other garment you carry on. Next up, I suggest to bring two to three dress shirts. Even if you just go on a one-day trip, there's always a chance that someone spills something on you and it's much better to have something that you can change into than having to figure out where you can get it dry cleaned. Honestly, I think plain white solid shirts or maybe cream or light blue are perfect. You can also go with pastel tones such as light yellow, light green, light lavender and so forth. Now a proper business shirt usually doesn't have a chest pocket because you shouldn't use it anyways and you also want double cuffs or French cuffs for cufflinks. Now, if you travel to a climate that is warmer, or maybe if you don't like cufflinks, you can also get away with barrel cuffs. It's acceptable in this day and age. What about undershirts? If you're not sure if you should wear one or not, please check out this in-depth video guide here. If you decide an undershirt is right for you, I suggest not to go with the traditional fine rip wife beater undershirts. Instead, I suggest you get t-shirt-like undershirts that sit fitted on your body with relatively tight sleeves and a deep cut v-neck because that way if you wear a dress shirt without a tie and you wear a dress shirt unbuttoned, people won't be able to see the t-shirt underneath which is a style and fashion faux pas. In terms of color, I suggest you pick something that is as close to your skin tone as possible. So don't go with a white, rather go with black or maybe heather gray or even skin tone colors if you can find them. No, a regular t-shirt is not a good substitute because it's thicker than an undershirt and has thicker seams that you can see on the outside of the shirt. Next up is a suit. There's probably no other garment that is more business appropriate than a dark suit. If you have to pick one, I suggest to go with a navy worsted suit, ideally single-breasted with notch lapels, either one button or two button, side bands, maybe some cuffs on the bottom of the pants so they pull down the pants and prevent any potential wrinkles. 
In terms of weight, I'd go for a three season weight. If you want just one all arounder, you can also opt for something with an open weave. That way you feel the breeze because sometimes when you're in an office environment, it can get quite hot. But you know yourself if you're likely to overheat or if you feel cold all the time. If you're in a colder climate, you can also go with a flannel suit, such as the charcoal or gray flannel suit I'm wearing here right now. If you decide you wanna bring a second suit, I suggest to go with a double-breasted suit simply to mix it up and have different degrees of formality. Also, I wouldn't go with the same color, but have maybe one in gray and one in blue. If you decide to just bring one suit, I think the navy suit is ideal because you can wear just a jacket with a contrasting pair of pants, either let's say gray flannels or a pair of chinos, and it looks like a blazer combination. That way, you have a more versatile wardrobe and you don't have to bring on an extra jacket. If you want to learn more about the details of a business appropriate suit, I suggest you check out the video on what to wear as a lawyer, which basically applies to all white collar professions, or you can also check out what to wear to an interview, which is in general a good guideline for most office environments. When it comes to accessories, I think a necktie is essential, especially in a classic business environment. If you're a little more flamboyant, or if you're maybe independent or an area where dress codes are a little more relaxed, you can also go with a bow tie. Otherwise, I suggest to stay with a classic necktie. A pocket square can really help to make your outfit look more polished. So you have a white shirt, a white linen pocket square, especially in a TV fold or even a crown fold, can add a finishing touch. You can find a selection of all kinds of pocket squares, as well as regular neckties and bow ties in our shop here. When it comes to cufflinks, I suggest to go with a simple pair, such as a monkey fist knot cufflink in silver or gold. Skip the colored enamel cufflinks, as well as the gemstone or diamond cufflinks. They're better for evening wear or areas or events where you know you can just be a little more loud. If you want to travel light, I suggest to put the cufflinks right into the double cuffs of the shirt before you fold them. The same is true for your collar stays. Put them in the shirt so you don't have to pack them separately. If you have more items, such as rings or watches, you probably wanna go with a travel jewelry case. If you work in a classic white collar environment, you probably don't wanna wear a boutonniere. I, on the other hand, oftentimes wear one simply because I can and I enjoy it. And the green Ford Belvedere box is the perfect travel companion for that because it protects your flowers and that way they stay in shape and you can wear them wherever you are on the globe. Next up is a toiletry kit. I suggest to keep a small bag that you can easily remove at any point in time because sometimes at security you have to remove it depending on your status and your pre-screening. To save on space, definitely go with travel size items and don't bring your regular size aftershave, shaving cream, or toothpaste. I know it's just a little thing, but all those items add up. They add weight and especially volume and bulk. I also find that sample sizes of either cologne or shaving cream, sometimes also shampoo, are perfectly enough for a short business trip and they hardly take any space at all. So keep that in mind. Rather than a safety razor or a straight razor, which you can't bring in carry-ons, I suggest you go with an electric shaver. Yes, you may also go with a cartridge system. However, I find the shave to be inferior to an electric shaver if you go with a wet shave. And it's my preferred item because I just bring one item with one charge and I can use it. I don't have to worry about the blades getting dull or having the right blades or a TSA agent not knowing what he's talking about and who made me throw away something I actually need afterwards. Of course, you also need socks and underwear, but that goes without saying. For a business trip, I suggest you go with over-the-calf socks because you will never want to expose your calves. With a gray suit, for example, a shadow stripe in charcoal and gray is ideal. With a blue suit, I could go with a shadow stripe in navy and blue or something with navy and red if you wanna be a little more unique. And you can find a broader selection of business appropriate socks over the calf in our shop here. If you want a few more casual items such as a sweater or a cardigan, it's okay to pack it. I suggest to go with thinner cotton ones rather than bulkier wool ones because space is very limited in your carry-on. If it's warmer, you also may wanna bring polo shirts so if you wanna work out, maybe a pair of workout shorts and t-shirts 
All of these shouldn't be folded, but rolled, unlike your dress shirts, which should be folded. Personally, as an online entrepreneur, I always bring my laptop as well as my camera gear in a separate letter bag that I can put on top of my carry-on that I can hook on so it doesn't fall off and I can still easily push it with one hand while doing something on the phone or checking things out. So it's extremely convenient. So last but not least, something that you don't pack, but I suggest you always bring is either a type of overcoat in the winter, which in this case could be something like this gray, blue, and black overcoat with a black velvet collar and double-breasted, or it could be something like a single-breasted overcoat in either navy or black or charcoal, or if you travel during the warmer months of the year, I suggest you bring a trench coat, ideally something darker. Yes, you can also go with the traditional kind of khaki trench coat, but it stains more easily than let's say a black or navy one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other business related videos, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so stuff like this comes right to your inbox. In today's outfit, I'm wearing a classic business appropriate outfit, which consists of a white dress shirt with a classic collar. I'm combining it with a matter silk red and green tie from Fort Belvedere, which you can find in our shop here, just like the white pocket square in the TV fold, which is made out of Irish linen with hand rolled edges. The suit is a classic double breasted suit with six buttons, two closing buttons. It's made out of a dark gray flannel and it's perfect for winter. I could also combine the slacks with a regular navy blazer. And so combining those two colors is just always ideal and makes for very versatile outfits in a business context. For my shoes, I opted for a black Oxford half brook because it's a little less formal and it works well with the less formal flannel texture of my suit. For my socks, I opted for a little bit of contrast in turquoise and gray shadow stripe socks from Fort Belvedere. <laughs> Thank you.